the city yeah. would retain ownership, even though the responsibility would be Marks or Jerry's or whoever was in charge. Okay, so, so for for this for this these the operations, okay. it's primary for the city, but for the school operations, it would actually be preferred that they they purchase it and we reimburse. So uh, we might have to amend your motion to state that specifically. Um, that's, that's what that's, I want to do. Okay. So I'll entertain an amendment to the motion. Or we have to. Uh, yeah, that uh, the school purchasing equipment and be re reimbursed by the city for the expenses. Okay. Yep. Second that thing. So we've got an amended motion. Uh, second. All in favor of the amendment motion? Right. I say aye. 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 Okay. And, uh, okay. Okay, anything else? Uh, anything else, Mark? No, thank you for the support on that. And uh, we look forward to bringing more live broadcasts uh, this fall. We are anticipating two per week um, during the athletic season, not including um, fine arts and other activities. So um, it's going to be a busy year for us. Yep. Okay, then uh, next thing on the agenda as part of that operations. Uh, Jill, do you have any comments or questions or anything? Probably just not really uh, as far as operations go because I don't do very much with the operations. I help, I basically help the station manager. Um, but just kind of an FYI, Chris um, got a job at Best Buy in Minnetonka. He had moved to Minnetonka quite some time ago, so it was not a surprise by any means that it was became too much. Um, he gave a two-week notice, and then within about three days, uh, needed to be done. So that's why it was a bit abrupt. So we had to fast forward because of the fact that he was the only person, lesson learned, that knows anything back here. That's not going to happen to me again. <laughs> so um, I, we're going to make sure that there are a couple of people that know how this goes because if one is not here, the other one can then help because I know nothing. So. Um, that was a good lesson learned. But Mark, um, we had interviewed Mark for the position initially, and um, so we, I, I, you know, I had already, we had already felt very comfortable with him. And when he said he was available, and he came down and interviewed with us again, it was, uh, you know, it seemed like a good fit. So we moved forward as quickly as possible. So uh, to, in an effort that he could spend some time with Chris, um, which then. Again, that really didn't happen anyway. It was a couple of hours. So Mark um, was doing a nice job just um, sort of getting himself acquainted and cleaning up and just different things like that. Um, I think you guys will be very happy with his communication skills and um, the skills. He's got a lot of skills uh, as far as video production as well. So I think we're going to be in good shape after gets the learning curve done. And what kind of hours are you uh, going to be expected to be here? He, um, well, it's pretty, you know, they're, you know, we're pretty flexible with that as long as, as long as he's communicating with the public. So far, he's been here every day. So it's been, I've been really enjoying that because I feel like the station is being really involved in the curve. So. The reason why I asked is because a lot of times the public has something to yeah. uh, give them or yeah. want to do, work with them, and they should feel comfortable going when Absolutely. Do. And I think what we've talked about with Mark is after things get going, we may post um, his hours so that people ha are aware of when he's here, and then we can also post by appointment if somebody has a special need, they can do that as well. Okay. But so far, I mean, he's been here every day. so. Yeah. And that, that is my intent 
is to be here at least on Monday through Friday. Essentially, 10 to 6 is my, my window I'm looking at currently. But I get to park, have somebody here all the time. Because there are some things you can do in your life that you can perform. Absolutely. Okay, now let's move on to old business, cable TV franchise renewal, John. Okay, so I think since the last meeting time, I've had two or three calls uh, with Charter on the renewal. Um, had the last one last Tuesday, and at that, the working orders at that time was, were for Bob Bowles to be drafting the franchise agreement to get back to Charter. So um, part of the... I, as you recall, last fall, we worked on the needs assessment um, response from the Charter and sent back uh, about 10 points of items that we wanted to address in the new uh, franchise agreement. Uh, most of them Charter accepted, a couple they, they had contention with and a few they just couldn't. They weren't, their common response was, if we're not statutorily obligated to provide that service, or provide that reimbursement or cost, we're not doing it. So they wouldn't, you know, they're not going to provide anything above and beyond what the what legally they have to, which is their position now and that they want with all the franchises moving forward. So that impacts the um, cable box converters. I believe that was a big contention point that they gave them for free and then now are charging people for them or even charging the city for those for those conversion boxes for digital converter boxes um, even for the channels that otherwise the subscription service is provided for free but the box is not so we will have to pay for those it was something that they feel they're not obligated to provide that they're provide, obligated to provide the content but not the means of watching it <laughs> So in this new conversion, uh, the others were uh, making sure that we would get, because I don't, Mark, this may be new to you or something, but the content that leaves this facility has to currently go through a down conversion to an analog or uh, SD, not even an SD, an analog uh, modulator. And there was a lot of question over whose piece of equipment that, that who, who was responsible for that piece of equipment. Prior, previous, previous operators thought it was um, a charter piece of equipment. And at, so that question has been asked many, many, many times of who it belongs to and what do we need to do to get this piece of equipment upgraded. The conclusion that we've reached is that it can be upgraded, uh, but as a city expense. Um, so the city can purchase an HDSD modulator that would be able to um, dual output both the school's speed and the Great River Television speed because there was a, with the current system, if they didn't go out, as explained to me, on the same wavelengths, then one feed would drop or one would get stronger, the other would get weaker, so you could have signal quality um, problems with, with that system. So now it would be converted to digital. It may not be in the 1080 high def range, but it will certainly be a digital signal leaving this facility going out to Charter. And that Charter, as Charter has explained to me many, many times, every they've done everything on there and to upgrade everything to produce, to re send back digital signals to residents and locals. So there's nothing in, in their way for them to receive the signal in digital that would prevent it from coming back to us. That was part of the question. If, we're sending, if we were told we had to send it out in analog, why are we having to send it out in analog? Did so, Chris look up the cost of, of this particular He, he did, um, and Charter has quoted me one as well. Charter um, offered that they would purchase it and we could reimburse them for it, uh, and their cost estimate verbally was about $4,300. Uh, Chris also researched the same piece of, similar piece of equipment, different vendor, and his was about $3,100 or $3,200. So, 
so it's a little what Chris Chris had found was a little cheaper. But I can I can work with that's not going to impede the franchise negotiations at this point anymore. But we can get that and that problem. Small price to pay for upgrading our city. It took it. I, I was I was. I was frustrated when that was the response that I finally got, and we spent literally six yes. to eight months uh, in the way with this one issue impeding all future negotiations. Because if we couldn't settle this, it was going to be a huge problem with what what working in charter after this point. And when they finally figured it out, and what I've learned is that they really the people at charter that I spoke to really didn't know what they had here. They just didn't understand the systems and the infrastructure that they had in place in the falls. And it's, um, and I think they're finally opening their eyes to it and finally figuring out that oh, everything here is upgraded, ready to go, and we should just have done this all the time. So what's it going to take for us to get fixed? We just need to get it ordered and changed out. Let's do it. So do you need a motion? No. No. Okay. Okay. Well, well, How does that impact your analog? But the, that's the other the other side of it is that you also send it out an analog modulator, and because it was easier to as Chris explained to me, it was easier better for you to convert it to analog at the school and send it to here, even though you don't have to. There's a fiber network between the two or connection between the two, and you could upgrade yours to a digital modulator as well. So just by bypassing the the analog converter, you could send a signal down here. In HD, you can send it down straight across the fiber without having to incur any more expense. Yeah. Cool. So you, you just, just take unplug that. And plug that so, so we just need to. So that takes care of your situation. Takes care of us having to dump, dump it down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. that's wonderful. So that yeah. Yeah. hopefully we'll solve Christmas. a lot of our quality problems. Um, and if they can't guarantee that everything is, like I said, everything is going to be back in the 1080 definition. It's some, something they wouldn't provide. Um, what they've explained is that a lot of their public access operators don't even produce in 1080, so they... Probably 720. Yeah, so they, and like I said, they want to have as much uniformity between their franchise agreements with all the cities that they work with. So, so yeah, so the franchise agreement being drafted now um, between the two attorneys to, to kind of settle on before it's presented um, uh, for approval. So, yeah. <coughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, so, so by the next meeting, we should have a franchise agreement on the, on the table. So, um, if if there are any future sticking points with the franchise agreement. Likely Charter would ask for a, um, an extension to their old franchise agreement um, so that we could continue and negotiate. Um, but as Bob believes, I think, and um, Jane Bringer, their the attorney for Charter, believe they have we have enough of the points of you know the points of disagreement within the franchise agreement settled that we we negotiated to. So. Viable franchise for us. So the understanding of that a little bit more. Yeah. That. yeah. So that's a big point right there. Yeah. So there will, you know, there will be periods of review available for us within the franchise agreement to ensure that all the conditions are being met. Uh, but they they would be looking for the, the longest in length of terms franchise that we can. Max is fifteen years. So I believe that's a little ask for it. So what would those periods of review look like? About five, uh, five years span. Um, making sure that uh, we have the equipment that we need um, to operate, uh, to meet the you know, current technologies available. Uh, and within that, the other side of it, how they want to modify the peg fees uh, would be to move towards more grant, re grant request replacements. So when we do have a piece of equipment that we request a grant from Charter to replace that, and then they would institute peg fees to reimburse themselves for the cost of that, that grant. 
So the tax fees aren't going to be automatic. They they are they're looking for a modify you know they could they, they want to add and remove the, the they can add and remove the peg fees as well. Ooh. Okay, so that doesn't give us a, an ongoing amount of money. Right. Exactly. That's one that's one of the requests that they're making. So we'll see if that if that's how it actually gets drafted. Bob wasn't very good to know that. But either way, I I don't think it was an that I don't think it was impacting charters having you know utilizing the peg fees and understanding that we need equipment equipment needs to and we need that means to collect revenue exactly. to replace them. Um, it was just a measure of they wanted some flexibility with bringing the peg fees on. Better their competitive. They're still going to be assessing each customer at 50 cents, regardless. Not necessarily. Really? Not well. If they didn't have a, if there's no need for for grant funds for a period of time, then the 50 cents would go off the bill. Mm -hmm. so, as it was explained. Mm -hmm. We'll see. That one was still kind of out. Well, hopefully. We reserve the right to utilize peg fees. Yes. To, but so that will stay. That will not go away. That will be a part of the contract. Okay. Five percent gross revenue return on the franchise fee was also. I wouldn't suspect the revenue stream to, to drop right, unless, uh, unless the subscribers go down. But uh, what would we do in this case if we didn't have this pay fee and this security bucket of money that we've been assessing and, and, and saving? And, and Mark comes in and he says, see, I need this piece of equipment and it's 12000 how are we going to come up with that? Where's that come from? Who's going to pay for it? You know, and the city fathers. Like Char Charter wants us to then request a grant, and then they'll click Whoa, the big feedback on them. Yeah, no, I, I don't yeah. like that idea at all. I would like to be in charge Am of the stream of revenue. That correctly? That's what they want. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's not a good idea. The stream of revenue should be stopped with us, in other words. When it comes in, we keep the file and allocate it as we see fit. If that's a sticking point, I would be hard pressed to okay it. Okay. Interesting. I'll provide that feedback. Well, when I get my bill, it's not going to say, well, congratulations, at 50 cents, $9, $9 a month yeah. for an extra box, and they're worried about 50 cents. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that doesn't make sense. They have no competition directly, so it's not a competitive issue. Well, the, from what I've learned is they don't think in terms of each individual city very well anymore. I think you could have stopped at the first part of that sentence, they don't think. <laughs> Anybody have any questions, John, about anything else? Good job, John. Good. Mm -hmm. Bob's been very helpful. He's mm -hmm. he's really really knowledgeable. He's working with multiple cities, so it's it's he's a great app, asset to have on our team for negotiations because he can he can he knows the perspective from three or four or five different cities of what they're going through, and they're all working with charter as well. So. I These attorneys have to kind of work together. So. I worked with Bob before with 
Had some of the other cities come to a conclusion? Have they come up with a working agreement? And, and uh, okay, they're they're closing in on others. See, there was like four or five that, that, are, that we're all sitting that we're all kind of in the same okay. spot that we are. Wow. And so, you know, it's frustrating that we're outside of the franchise this long. Um, there, there are a couple things both on both the city side in terms of initiating the conversations uh, in charge side and not following through up with any. Um, but I'd say for the most part they're the they're the moving party, so it should be on them to ensure that they're continuing the renegotiation this continuing contract it is their responsibility yeah. to have the agreement and not ours. Well, I'd like to make a comment. Um, as a customer of Charter, as well as someone who records and uses free speech on these channels, has for a long time, um, I want to inform this board, as I did the city council, uh, that I believe the city's in violation of the 1984 Cable Communications Policy Act of 1984. And I did file a formal complaint with the state attorney general's office last week. One of the um, things I'm asking for them to work with the city on is um, holding a public meeting that's required before any negotiations are even discussed. And that comes, that comes from this communication from Bob Wos, Kennedy and Graven, and this letter is dated 2012, and it states within six months of that request, meaning according to char the charter will request renewal of a franchise in the next few months, this is three, almost four years ago now, um, says within six months of that request, the city must commence a proceeding that gives the public notice and opportunity to participate. The purpose of this meeting, proceeding is to review the company's franchise compliance and past performance, identify the community's future cable related needs and interests. And then I also wanna ask about, and this comes from the Federal Communications Commission, it says, Cable systems with a thousand or more subscribers, which is the case here in Little Falls, are required to maintain certain documents in a public inspection file.